Hello boys and girls, my name is Danny Mac, and it's that time of year again where ZBrush releases a new update, so everyone on YouTube uploads the same goddamn feature review for nothing more than cheap views. Well, I don't want to get left behind, so that's why in this video, I'm going to do my own two minute review of ZBrush 2. So from Windows XP, let's fire a up. The first thing you'll notice is this new splash screen, which now features a video, and I think it is a really cool addition, and it's really amazing what people have created with ZBrush 2. I've just sped this up a little bit so you can see more of them. You'll also notice they've added this help topic where they've answered all of your frequently asked questions, such as how do I change the interface, and how do layers work. This is accompanied by the inclusion of in-app tutorials, which are actually genius. In the app itself, you'll notice the UI has had quite the overhaul, as I know some of you were hoping for. They're obviously going for a more retro feel and have removed a lot of the clutter. For instance, you'll notice there's no brush menu anymore, which I thought was a bit controversial, as this meant I struggled to find the nine new sculpting brushes, but you can find them right here in the transform menu. Also, the matte caps have now gone, but presumably that's down to Pixel Logic moving in the PBR direction. We can, however, find a brand new transform function down here called Spin, which I've got to tell you, I've been using this all day. Now at first glance, it seems as though they have been listening to their users because there's no more transpose line, whereas the gizmo is still there. However, you might have heard the rumours of subtools getting folders with the latest release. Well, they've actually completely removed subtools altogether, which I thought was a very bold move indeed. Yet, while they've necessarily removed quite a lot of features, they have kept the important ones. For example, if you want a rhino horn, I'll give you a goddamn rhino horn. Also, it's nice to see the sweep function I mentioned in my last video also made the cut. And of course, the snake hook brush is still in there. All these cuts do seem to have made the app a lot more stable though, having suffered zero crashes during testing so far. Moving on, there's been a number of hotkey changes, but the only one you really need to be aware of is that if you press ALT followed by a letter, it will shoot the corresponding menu across to the side. This is nice, though I have no idea which letter corresponds to which menu. Now, I am trying to keep this to two minutes, so it will be impossible to run through all of the features that this app has got to offer. So as I said, I will put a link to them all in the description below, and go and check them out for yourself. I particularly like that the installation and registration will now take place automatically, as that's something we've struggled with in the past. So let me know what you guys think. Do you like the new update? Do you like what they've done here? Were you as impressed as I was with the models that were produced with ZBrush 2? Do you think they've gone a bit overboard with the features cuts? Do let me know. If you've enjoyed this video, please give me two thumbs up, followed by a filthy comment and a tickle of the subscribe button while you're doing that. Have a good weekend, guys.